not this time. So is it working? Yeah. Whew, that was exhausting. Sometimes technology is just so fun. I'm just going to wait a minute or two till people pop on here. I hate being late. Hi, Marcy. Hi, Dana. Hi, Leticia. Leticia. Hey, it's Leticia from the Uber the other night. Come say hi. Hey, Dana. We're going to get going in just a minute. I'm just going to let people catch up and get on here because I don't want people to miss stuff. Hi, Ashley. You're not going to come say hi? Stacey's being rude, Leticia. She's not coming over to say hi. She's rude. Come over here and say hi. You look so cute in your glasses. What do you guys see how cute Stacey looks in her glasses? <laughs> say hi. Hi. So I wanted to go live tonight. Um, I put that post out there today so that yeah, she is cute, isn't she? Everybody loves her. She's the reason people like me. So we keep her around. So um, I wanted to go live tonight. I put that post out there so some people could see. Um, I want to talk about goals and goal setting. But more importantly, I want to talk about maybe why some of us aren't getting to our goals. And I think some of the stuff I'm going to say to you might be a little surprising. Unique ideas. Maybe I'm wrong. Who knows? But hear me out. Maybe I'm right. All right, so when you set goals, right, we know this stuff. I'm just going to go over it really quickly. I think most people know this. They, they have the acronym SMART, you know, specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, time, uh, time bound. Right? That's the SMART system of setting goals. Um, but I think that, First of all, the first thing you need to do in setting goals, you need to have an overreaching lifestyle, lifetime, like big picture goal. Like what do you want? Who do you want to be? What are you? Do you want to be a mom and a, and a homemaker and, or, or are you like a, uh, like a traveler and you just wander the earth or are you a, like a, a school teacher? And I don't know. I'm totally stereotyping people right now. But I just, what, what is your overreaching goal for your life? Do you want to be wildly successful and be really, really rich? I mean, the people who want that in their life, they think everybody wants it. But the fact is, not everybody cares about money. Okay, so, or do you just want to live a really simple life and be happy and fall in love? And is that your overreaching goal? I, I don't know. But I do know that you need one big idea of what your life is and what you want your life to be. Okay, so my life is behind me. This is my overreaching goal. See, so that's our map. And you can't really see from far away, but we scratch off everywhere we go. These are all pictures of our travels everywhere, of, of my family. That's my life. That's my goals right there. All right, so um, then you set smaller goals, right? You set goals about your career and your and financial goals and educational goals and artistic goals and, and attitude goals and physical appearance goals, right? We have all of those goals. So I think that a couple things are important with goals. Put them in writing, right? We all know that. Put them out there. We've, you've heard me talk about that. Put them up on the wall so you see them. That's not really what this is about today. Um, and then you make an action plan, right? We're going to talk about that action plan. But have you ever heard of goal competition? Anybody? Anybody ever heard of that? So think about this. If you have all these goals, I want to be the best stay-at-home mom I can possibly be, and I want to be a multi-millionaire, I want to build a multi-million dollar business, and I want to be a really good cook, and I want to be like a competitive horse uh, rider. Those are a lot of big goals, right? They compete with each other. You can't have all of those goals. You can't be the absolute best at every single thing. You have to be a little more focused than that. You also need to really get clear, real clear, crystal clear, right through, see right through your priorities are. Is your priority to be the best, most amazing stay-at-home mom, most present mom, or is your goal to build a $10 million business in the next five years? Because I'm here to tell you, I'm a realist, you're not doing both, <laughs> okay? And I know that some of my network marketing friends are on here like, whoa, what'd she just say? Guys, you're not doing both. And that's okay. It's okay 
for your priority right now in this season of your life to be your kids, right? It was for me when my kids were little. If you look back on my life, then you can see what activities I was doing. It made sense. But now that's not my goal anymore. I have older kids. He doesn't even like me. Even if he was here, he wouldn't be around me, right? They don't like you anymore. There comes a season in life where you can move on to different goals. So think about your goals. Make sure you're prioritizing them really well because goal competition is a huge problem. Matter of fact, I was just texting with somebody who will know who I'm talking about. I believe he's on here. He'll know who I'm talking about, about goal competition, about feeling like a little stretched and like I need to do this and I need to do that and I need to do this and I need to do that and I'm all over the place. You have to prioritize your goals and figure out what they are or else they're going to compete with each other and none of them are going to win. Right? So that's really, really important, I think. Okay. So um, habit stacking. Has anybody ever heard that? Anybody out there? I know you're watching. I can see the little number. Anyone want to talk to me? Anybody brave enough to say hi? <laughs> anybody know what habit stacking is? So habit stacking is you already have habits. You have well-established habits. I know you do. Sorry, but anybody on here over 22 has habits, okay? We are creatures of habit. I wake up in the morning. I do almost the same thing every single morning. Matter of fact, I just made a decision yesterday that I'm changing my morning routine starting tomorrow. Super excited about it. Um, I wrote it down, wrote down exactly what I want to do, and I did habit stacking. So what that means is if you brush your teeth, Say, let's say your habits are you get up in the morning, you check Facebook, you know that's what you're doing, guys. Knock it off. You know you're checking Facebook. Then you get up and you brush your teeth, and then you take your shower, then you get dressed, then you put one sock on and one shoe on, and the other sock and the other shoe, or maybe you're a two sock, two shoe guy. I don't know what you are, but you do, you have habits. Well, what if you stacked on those habits? So you know you're going to brush your teeth. Right, your mom yelled at you enough, you brush your damn teeth in the morning. You, you're, you got that. So great. So, uh, so maybe your big goal is maybe you're a fitness competitor and you're trying to, and you're, or, or you're trying to, you know, you're trying to tone up your arms. Okay, that's your goal. Great. You're going to brush your teeth, and every day after I brush my teeth, I'm going to do 10 push ups. Okay. Maybe you're a network marketer. So your goal is to, you're going to say, okay, I'm going to brush my teeth and then I'm going to reach out to 10 people right afterwards. That's habit stacking. You already have the first habit, attach the second habit to it, and it will help you get into those habits because habits, not motivation, habits is what creates lasting and permanent success. Motivation is great. We just went to an awesome conference, right? Four days of motivation and shouting and yelling and sharing the shot and Rah, rah, awesome, super motivated, feeling good. Life is going to smack us all in the face tomorrow, <laughs> right? We're all going to get up tomorrow, and the dog's going to shit on the rug, and the kid's going to be screaming, and they're not going to have slept, and life is going to happen. Motivation is not going to stay with you. Habits will. So sit down and really think about what your goals are, and when you create your strategies, whatever your plan is for your life, so maybe you're going to go become... You want to, you want to, maybe it's a fitness goal and you're wanting to work out more. You want to go, want to lose 10 pounds, write down what your strategy is for the, that 10 pound loss. Okay. So I'm going to start a new nutrition plan. I'm going to go to the gym four days a week. I'm going to whatever the things are and make sure the things that are hard get stacked with a habit. You have a habit probably of eating dinner at a certain time. Great. If water intake, Shane, talking to you. If water, sorry, we've been teasing about that for four days. If water intake is a goal for you and you need to intake more water, stack it with another habit. Every time I finish my meal, every time before my meal, I'm going to drink an eight ounce glass of water. And right after my meal, I'm going to drink an eight ounce glass of water. That's habit stacking. You're going to eat. Attach the other habit to it. Okay. Does that make sense? All right. Somebody put a yes or something in the comment bar. If any of this makes sense, can I get a Why? Like a smiley, anybody out there? I know you're watching. I can see you all. Um, all right, so maybe. Oh, there we go. There they are. I didn't scroll down. <laughs> Hi, Nancy. Hi, Dana. Dana, no one can see you, honey. I'm on live. I love you, though. You're the best. 
Oh my God, you guys are so cute. All right, I can't read all that right now. I'll read it later. Habit stacking, really, 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 really important. Marcy, Marcy, habit stacking, I'm glad that you love it. Every time you change a diaper, drink a half a glass of water, right? You change a lot of diapers, you're gonna be super hydrated woman. That's gonna be you. <laughs> All right, so here's the next thing. After you're done figuring out your strategic plan and you stack up your habits, you're going to wanna think about your environment. You wanna align your environment to meet up with your goals. Now let's think about that, because that sort of sounds like a cute like quote, right, that you could like put on Facebook or Instagram, that's cute, and we could just move on. But what does it mean? So let me tell you a story about my life. Those of you who have been in my living room will know that this is true. We do not have a television in this living room. Um, about a year and a half ago, we made a family goal to spend more time together as a family, because like I said, we have a 14-year-old, and he's kind of a jerk, and he doesn't really super like us a lot, and so he tends to spend a lot of time in his room or outside or with other people and, you know, avoiding us. And we like him. We like him. We like him most of the time. We want to spend some quality time with him doing stuff like playing cards and talking and like, you know, using words. So <clears throat> we set that as a goal and we looked around our environment and said, what's stopping that? What was stopping that was we had this giant ass couch staring at a giant TV. Well, if your environment has a big old couch staring at a big old TV, what is it? What is your environment telling you to do? It's telling you to watch TV. Well, I didn't want that anymore. I wanted to talk to each other. So I ripped the TV off the wall. We, we <laughs> I sold the couch it, while Stacy went to the grocery store. It's kind of a long story. So she went to the grocery store, she came back and our giant couch was gone. Um, so we, we put different furniture in here and aligned our environment so we actually sit you have to sit facing each other in my living room. There's no television. There's music. We can have music. And instead of the other furniture that we have on the other side, we put, I'm actually standing in front of it, we put a pool table here. So we play games in this room. We talk to each other. We play cards. We hang out. And what I found was when I ripped that TV off the wall, we started actually talking to each other. And we met our goal. Think about that with everything that you do. So again, with the water intake, let's talk about water intake. Align your environment with your goal. If you're wanting to, if you're wanting to take in more water, you should have a water bottle with you at all times, right? If you want to stop drinking, don't have vodka in the house. If you're trying to stop eating chips, I love chips a lot. So I can't have them in my house because I'm wanting, I set some health goals for myself. They're not here. My environment is completely aligned with my goals. If, uh, you know, so, so that makes sense, right? You guys get that. Whatever your goals are, that's what it needs to be. And that's what we talk about, putting things up on the wall. You know, in my office, I have my big goals up on my wall. I look at them every day. That's my environment being aligned with my goals and my strategies. All right. So the last thing I want to say, and this is the most important thing, guys. You know, I heard something. Brendan, we listened to Brendan Bouchard talk this weekend. Um, he's a great motivator. And one of the things he said is highly, highly successful people obsess over the things that matter the most. And I've been thinking about that and thinking about that and thinking about it obsessively, actually, since he said it. And here's what I think. You know how a lot of you, if you, if you plug into self-help stuff, if you're a network marketer, you've definitely heard this. Um, if, you, if you listen to self-help stuff out there, you hear things like, the journey is what's important. So I've always struggled with that. I struggle with gray area. I am not a gray area person. I am black and white. I'm give me a checklist. I'm tell me I, what I have to do and I'll do it. Tell me 40 push-ups is going to give me the body I want. I'm doing the 40 push-ups, right? That's just who I am. So that whole embrace the journey and then you will find the goal. I don't understand that. <laughs> it's taken me a real long time to get to the point of that. Here, I think I got it. I think when Brendan Bouchard said to me, obsess over what matters, it all made sense. So listen, we need to set the goals so that we can create the strategies, right? So that we can align our environments to meet those strategies so we can do them. But the goal should not be obsessed over. It's the process that needs to be obsessed over. Okay, so if my goal is to lose 20 pounds and my strategy is to start a nutrition plan and go to the gym, I need to obsess over my nutrition plan and the gym. 
if my goal is to make a million dollars, right? And my strategy is to uh, I'm talking network marketing terms here. I know not all of you are network marketers, but if my goal is to make a million dollars and my strategy is to reach out to 50 people a day and to enroll 10 people a month and whatever my goal, my, whatever my strategies are, you have to obsess over those strategies and not over whether you reach the goal. So he, the problem I've seen uh, specifically in the last month is we set these goals for ourselves and it happens in health journeys and it happens in financial journeys a lot. Well, so we say things like, I want to lose 20 pounds this month. Okay, we set this goal, this arbitrary goal. We don't take into account that there's money on. We just say, I want to lose 20 pounds. And we, do, we, we try real hard. We try real hard. We try real hard. And we get on the scale on the last day of the month, and we only lost 18. And we didn't hit our goal. And we're so devastated because we are obsessed over the 20 pounds. Now, listen, if we were obsessed over the strategies to get to that goal, and we had obsessed over... Did I get to the gym every time I said I did? Yes, I did. Stacey and I made some health goals this weekend. We went to, to Nashville for four days. People were drinking. We were in bars. There was great fried food everywhere. You know what we did? We ate a shake for breakfast. We have goals we're trying to get to. We sat down. We wrote these down. We said, this is what we're going to do. For two days, we had two shakes a day and our, our 600-calorie meal and our two snacks. We drank all of our water. And guess what we did the last two days? We didn't eat. We cleansed for two days on vacation because we obsessed about the way to get to our goal. Okay, so at this point, because I've, I've, I'm so freaking proud of ourselves, because we've never, we always say we're going to do stuff like that, right? We, we never get to it. But we obsessed over how we were going to get to that goal, and we made it. Like, we were high-fiving on the plane. We made it! We're headed back to the Northeast. We're out of Nashville. We didn't eat fried food. We didn't drink one time. We went to a party where everybody was drinking. We drank big, giant cups of ice water, for God's sake. We're so proud of ourselves. I don't care what the scale says. I don't even remember what my goal was because <clears throat> I obsessed over the strategy to get me there. It's going to get me there. You guys have to agree with that, right? If I set a correct strategy that's going to work in business or in health goals, it, the strategy is going to get me there if I do it. The biggest problem, the reason we don't get to our goals is because we don't do the stuff here. I think that gray area thing that they're talking about, embrace the journey, to me, that's... So instead of obsessing over whether you got to five enrollments or whether you got to 20 pounds lost or whether you got that promotion at work or whether you ran the full 5K, whatever... Instead of obsessing over the goal you set over there, I'm proposing that we obsess over the things that we said we would do to get to it. Because sustainable goals, sustainable goal setting over time, that's where it's at. It's in the journey. It's in the making sure that you're doing the do and you're doing the thing. Anybody can go on a diet for a week, guys. And anybody can kick ass at work for a week. But not everybody can have a sustainable weight loss for over years. Not everybody can have a sustainable million dollar business over years. It's the people that can obsess over doing the things that they need to do to get to where they want to be that make it. So that's really what I wanted to say. I appreciate you all coming here. I hope this adds some value to your day. Um, for those of you in my business group, I appreciate you uh, allowing me to take this out of there and put this in here for tonight. I love you all. And after this very long travel day, I've been up since 4 a.m. That's why I have my eShot shirt on because I've needed a lot of those today. Um, going to bed. <laughs> oh, you all have a great night.